Hi there and welcome back to Planescape Torment. I'm Baron and we just escaped from the mortuary in the last video. Now we are in a tomb. So, there is an exit. Sigil. We happen to be in Sigil. And there is an open tomb. This is where we came from. Yes. It's just a little tomb. Wait, it said we could rest in there. How do we do that? How do I actually rest? There. Okay. And outside we couldn't do this? Ah, okay. I don't really need to rest right now, but I just wanted to see how it works. Okay. <coughs> yes, it should I know. Well, what do we have here? A hive dweller? The man frowns as you approach. I have no time to be rattling my me bone box with strangers, cut us aside. Not generally safe to do so in the hive. Fare you well. Farewell. What do you say? Stay away from that burnt out alley southwest of here if you're not spoiling for trouble. Mm -hmm. Hey, we're being watched, Chief. Just look natural. Uh what? casual. Do we have to talk to you? Hey, what's eating you, Chief? Can you tell me a little about Sigil? Sigil is a ring-shaped city that's squatting on top of an infinitely tall spire in what some claim to be the center of the plains. Of course, how it could be at the top of an infinitely, infinitely tall spire and how the city could even be at the center of the plains raises some questions. Anything else? Sigil is called the city of doors, mostly because there's a lot of invisible doors that lead in and out of it. Just about every any arch, door, frame, barrel hoop, bookshelf and open window might be a portal under the right conditions. It all depends on if you have the key to open it. Keys? See, I guess the best way to explain it is, most portals are sleeping, right? You could walk through them, by them, on top of them and nothing would happen. Now every portal has something that wakes it up. That could be a tune you hum to yourself, a loaf of weak old bitopian bread, remembering what your first kiss was like and then BAM the portal gets its juices flowing and you can jump through it to whatever's on the other side. Like where? Anywhere chief, literally. Any place you can think of, there's a portal there. That's why Sigil is so popular across the plains. Hmm. Morty, I don't mind you taking along, but is there anything else you can do except chatter? Hey, chatting's my best trade. He rattles his teeth for a moment and grins. Eh? Eh? Oh, that's good to hear. No, but seriously, Chief, I got a knack for chattering in just the right way. I can really bend an ear if you know what I'm saying. I got insults, backtalk, stuff that'll curl someone's ear to their skull, you know. Uh, how's that useful? Ah, it's one of my many talents. I call it my litany of curses. You see, sometimes I can really bend someone's ear with just the right comment. Of course, then I usually have to do a lot of running afterwards, but you get the idea. How does it work? Updated my journal. Well, I can spit insults at someone until they get mad enough to chase me around. Okay, Morty has an ability called litany of curses. It is a non-magical taunt. If the target fails to resist it, they suffer a penalty with their armor class attacks and will do nothing but try to engage Morty in melee combat. Note that the more insults Morty hears, the better his litany of curses becomes. The litany of curses is very effective against mages. Mm -hmm. I could use some advice. What do you think we should do next? Well, here's how I see things. 
I think you should try and root out this ferret. Wherever he set up Kip, he wouldn't have had those directions tattooed on your back if he didn't have some inkling of what was up with you. One of the locals around here has to know where he is. Good point. How did you die, Morty? No idea, Chief. I kind of forgot when I died. Can't say I blame myself much, at least there was something waiting for me after I died, even if, it is, even if it is alive as a floating skull. I mean, it could have been worse. What happened to your body? Eh, uh, I don't know, alright? It's just gone. Morty glares at you. But I don't think I miss it, because I'm happy just the way I am, and I don't need your half fit judgments or side remarks. Snide remarks, alright? Um, okay. Why I'm not running anymore? Um. R. Done. I'm gone. Okay. Live in the hive is a wretched mess, I tell ye. Here, here. I have nothing to say that we are help to you, so it just leaves me alone. Fine, have it your way then. What is that here? Angyar's house. Hey, isn't that a Dabu? Hey, stay here. Yep, a Dabus. Talk to me. You see a tall creature with a shock of white hair. Its skin has a greenish cast and a pair of goat horns protrudes from its forehead. It is dressed in long throwing robes and appears to be floating slightly above the ground. Greetings! The creature turns to face you and a series of symbols appear just around, around its head. The symbols have a slight glow about them and they just hover there. Oh for the power's sakes, Piking Darbus. What's wrong? He's a Darbus, they speak in rebuses, these annoying word puzzles. If you don't know what he's saying, then we better find a native or some other way of communicating with him, if we want to. An annoying bunch. My bet, they can't speak. They just would rather piss everyone else off by trying to puzzle out what they're saying. What's a Darbus? Chant is their janitors for the Lady of Pain. They float around, breaking, fixing and patching up sigil according to her whims. They're worse than corpse flies, Morty sighs. You can't swat them though, or the lady will get upset. Lady of Pain, who's that? She runs the city. You'll know if you see her. She's got these blades around her face. She's about the size of a giant and she floats off the ground just like these guys. Morty nods at the Darbus who is looking at you both. Nobody knows much about her. She doesn't speak much. All you need to know is that you don't want to make her angry. If you see her, my advice, run. I see. The Darbus waits patiently, its hands tucked into its sleeves. A series of symbols materialize above its head, then they vanish and a question mark appears. Uh, try and strike up a conversation, see if you can slate what the Darbus is saying. We get some 1000 experience points. <coughs> because we are pretty intelligent, we should be able to pull this one off. You ask the Darbus several questions, trying to get a feel for the rebuses that appear above its head. It is extremely patient throughout your discussion, giving you easy sentences to translate. After a few minutes you start to get the hang of it, it feels like you've done this before. Maybe you can help me. The Darbus waits. Who are you? The Darbus inclines its head slightly and a stream of symbols appears above his head. I am Darbus. I have another question. What are you doing? I attend to my duties. Okay. Can you tell me about the Lady of Pain? A lone symbol appears above the Darbus' head. This one shows a metallic female mask with blades coming out of the sides. Just looking at the ghostly image makes you uncomfortable. Uh, I had another question for you. Farewell. The Darbus bows slightly. Symbols swirl around its head, then it turns away. All right. Let's go in here. Who are you? Angia. Let's save before we talk to you. This man looks haunted. His eyes are half lidded as if he has had trouble sleeping and his hair is long and unkempt. His beard is flecked with bits of dead skin and old bits of food. He doesn't seem to notice you as you approach. Greetings. 
The man glances up at the sound of your voice and his slack expression vanishes. It looks like someone has lit two fires in his eyes. What be your business barging into my house? His eyes narrow and his teeth clench. Get, or I'll send you back to whatever grave you crawled from. Calm yourself, I had some questions. The man's face turns blood red and begins shouting, Are you daft with a snarl he spits at your feet? You filthy, scar-ridden dog, off with you, or even the powers won't be able to save your hide. Go ahead and try if you think you have the strength. Damn. Uh, I'm not really sure whether this was the right thing to do, but hey. Um, let's try this again. Why was he so hostile? I quick saved, didn't I? Hmm, let's be hostile. No one speaks to me that way. Take back your words or this house will become a crypt. Okay. How do I avoid fighting him? Maybe I should talk to her first, wife of Anya. Ang this woman looks to be in her middle years and her hair has streaks of grey running through it. Lines of very crisscross her face and sh as she sees you she seems torn between asking you to leave and calling for the man at the table. Greetings. You, you'd best leave before I call my husband. He won't say kindly to you having barged into your way into our home. If you were going to call him, you would have done so already. I have some questions for you. She glances towards her husband, worry in her eyes. I, I have not the time, stranger. Do not be troubling me with such things. Excuse me, are you alright? Me? She seems surprised. Oh, hi, hi. She lowers her voice. You best leave. My husband has not been himself of late. You best not provoke him with your presence. Uh, what's wrong with him? <coughs> He's been out of sorts late. A touch of the cuff, maybe. She gives him. She gives an unconceiving half shrug. What's really wrong with him? I think. I think he's done something he regrets. A worried expression melts into despair. I think he signed one of the dead contracts. I cannot imagine what possessed him to, so such, to, to, to do such a foolish thing. Dead contracts? The dead, the dustmen, have contracts that give them the right to someone's body after they die. What do the dustmen do with the body after death? Animate it with their black magics, turn it into one of the walking dead, make it the worker till she looks at her husband helplessly till it rots away. Ah, why did your husband sign such a thing? He may have been goat eager to bring home some more jink than custom. He's prideful, but I think he's hurt himself more by doing so. Hmm. Your husband won't need his body after death. What's the problem? The ghoulishness of the contract aside, it's his nature that's been changed. He become sullen and dark since doing the sin the since doing the signing and he can't seem to rouse himself to look for honest work it's like the lady's shadow hangs on him she sighs mm, can this contract be undone she looks at you surprised and sighs i have tried i have spoken to the dustman he did the signing with but he's cold and chill like all the dusties he even lectured me on me on me husband as if I had no right to try and help him. Her lips become a tight thin line as if picturing the dustman's face. He was cold, cruel he was. Let me see what I can do. Who was this dustman your husband signed the contract with? The dusty calls himself Gravesand. I have I know not his first name. He has a table at the dustman bar in the hive, gathering dust I believe the place is named. You can most like find him there, trying to get more people to sign his contracts. I'll seek him out. Where's this gathering dust Updated ball? Updated my journal. Head out to the street outside. Go to the memorial stone, then head south and west from here. 
She taps her finger against her chin. You should run right into it. There's one of them, her face wrinkles in disgust, walking, walking corpses out front. Very well. I'll go see what I can do. I won't turn away such a friendly gesture. She seems grateful, then her worried expression returns. But I must ask you not to let on I ask you to do such a thing. My husband has a terrible temper, and if he were to find out, she shudders. Hmm. I can't make any promises, we'll have to see what happens. Then I asked that you keep as quiet as you can about the matter. Very well, I'll go see about undoing your husband's contract now. Oh, that's why he was so... Uh, but, uh, come on, I mean, if you have this contract on your head, you wouldn't attack a stranger and, you know, risk the chance of being killed right now, so... Hmm. Greetings. Um, what would happen if we would choose this one? I spoke to your wife. I think I can help you with. What were you doing, bothering me, wife? This ain't no flop house for war chasers. You'd best leave her alone and leave me home for the dead book. Gets a new name in it. Okay, that doesn't lead anywhere. We probably have to deal with the dusty first before we can do anything. On the other hand, if he's such a dick, why would I try to help him? Because his wife is nice, I guess. But why did she marry such a stupid ass? I'm punk? gone. Done. Oh wait, what's that? No, I don't want to leave yet. To the southeastern portion of the hive. Yeah, hold on for a sec. Um. I'm gone. Who's that? Just a regular dustman. You see a somber, pale-faced dust woman in black robes. She's staring into the distance and doesn't appear to notice you. Greetings. She turns slowly to face you. Yes? I had some questions. She folds her arms into her robes and waits. Do you know someone named Farad? Updated my journal. Farad is a collector. The woman studies you for a moment. If you would wish to know more of him, I am told that initiate a morphic in the gathering dust bar also seeks him. It may be that he can help you. Where is the gathering dust bar? As one leaves the mortuary front gate, head south and west. It lies past the memorial. Okay. Uh, why would you ask anybody about your journal? How are the chances that they know something about that? Uh, probably close to zero. She shakes her head, of course. Uh, I've misplaced right. the book. Have you seen it? Uh, that's not what you ask a total stranger on the street. Um, so there's the open tomb. Ah, hey, never ever seen something so ugly, have not. Ah, hey, something so ugly. Anna. Just look uh, you see a striking red-haired girl dressed in leather armor. Her right arm is covered with a series of interlocking plates that look as if they were taken from the skin of some creature, and a horn shoulder piece protects her left arm. Oddly enough, she has a tail that is flicking back and forth as you watch. Pike off. Greetings. The girl ignores you. Who are you? The girl sneers and makes an obscene gesture with her tail. Pike off, you clueless sod. Uh, hey, easy, I just had some questions. I, what it is you want? I'm looking for someone in Faro. Do you know where I can find him? Ah, yeah, I might. I might say more if you sweeten, if you sweeten the question. I. She clicks her tongue and wraps two fingers together. Jink, jink. I. Jink, jink. And she wants money. She means money. Oh. I glances at Morty and shrugs. What the skull said. Hard coin. All right. How much? How much is it to yet to know? I. She studies you, then folds her arms. Come on, I haven't got all day. Mm, how about ten? Oh, let's give her 20. I are right there. She pockets the money. It's gone so quickly, you have no idea it vanished. Where it vanished to. Look for him in the alley's bio ward from the mortuary. That's the south and west of the mortuary, I. Very well. I have some other questions. Can you tell me where I am? 
You're lost and you're about to find trouble and make yourself lost somewhere else, Bubba. <laughs> She's nice. You know you've got a tail? What a stupid question is that? Of course she knows that she got a tail. Let's see what amounts out of that. Do I know? <laughs> the girl looks at her tail. So I do. And here I was thinking that it was a trick of me eye. My, aren't you a sharp color? <laughs> she bares her teeth. Why don't you piss after whatever hole you crawled out of and leave me be? Me nor me tail is for trade, Jake. <laughs> Alright, I was just cure. It's, it's just as well, neither you <laughs> or your tail are for sale. You couldn't squeak out a living with them anyway. Um, okay, Mortier decided to jump in. What are you about, you blighter? Say it again. Oh, interesting. Maybe you can learn some new uh, curse words here. Let's see what happens. He said that you couldn't make a living selling yourself. But why would you want to piss her off? We could try to charm her, it's probably not going to work. Uh, with a charisma of 9. He didn't say anything, but I'm still curious. Why do you have a tail? The girl's eyes narrow to slits. Are you daft? Can it be that you are dumber than stone or maybe you are the power of ignorance? Maybe the devil's Brick you over and make your street. Look, she's a tiefling chief. They got some demon's blood in them. And that makes them paranoid and defenseless. Nice tail, though. Shame it's plastered on such an ugly body. Ha <laughs> ha! Hey, good one, Morty. <coughs> you better let your bone box, your foul mouth, mimic for I split it from your jaw, Jake. Why don't you try and split my jaw, shit? All I'm hearing is a lot of chatter from some hive trash. Throw a punch, I dare you. I'll bite your legs off. <laughs> Enough. That's alright. Leash your Mimi, Tartar. I'll bury him with his buddy, right? Mimi, what are you talking about? Aye, Mimi. What the gulf? What the gulf between your ears so wide? Me words echo? Egypt. You still haven't answered my questions. What's a Mimi? Mimir is a talking encyclopedia. That's me, chief. God. Got it. She glances at Morty, then you, then sneers. I guess I know which of you has the brains, eh? Well, looks like I have another question. Um, I'm missing a journal. Have you seen one? Uh, nay, I've seen nothing like that. I haven't. Thanks. Farewell. I pike off to whatever you came from, then. Farewell to you, too. walking ones looks like. Okay, so what happened now? Morty told me he has some special power for angering people called Litany of Curses. Apparently he's stored up so many insults during his life and death that he knows just how to provoke people into attacking him. When he angers them, they're easier to hit, they have a penalty to hit others and they won't do anything except chase Morty and try and pummel him with their hands to a hand-to-hand -hand attack. Sounds like it'd be a good idea, good thing to have around if I meet any spell slingers. The fact the talent isn't magical may make it work against some critters that would shrug off spells. I'm guessing that the more insults Morty hears from people I meet, the better his abilities become. I encountered a woman in the hive whose husband, Angyar, signed a dead contract with one of the dustmen in the Gathering Dust Bar, a man by the name of Mortai Gravesend. I offered to go see if I could go settle the contract for her and give her and her husband some peace of mind. She told me the Gathering Dust Bar was located in this block of the hive, south and west of the Dustman Memorial, and that there was a zombie standing out front. One of the dustmen told me that if I was looking for Ferret, I should speak to someone named Amoric at the Gathering Dust Bar, about to the south and to the west of the Mortuary Front Gate. So apparently, all tracks lead to the Gathering Dust Bar right now. And we have met Anna. 
Anna is a tiefling, a brash girl on the brink of womanhood. Her tail lashes when she's angry. She's a canny gutter snipe and the hive seems to be second skin for her. And she didn't join our party yet. Ah, what else do we have? Lady of Pain. The Lady of Pain is a mystery. She is widely regarded to be the de facto ruler of Sigil, its protector and its victim. She is said to guard the doors of the cage against the myriad schemes of the gods, to be the ultimate expression of balance in the multiverse, to be the prisoner of the city of doors. There are thousands of stories about her. One even tells that she's actually six giant scrolls with a head dress, rope and a ring of levitation and illusions, but none of them can be answered. She is a true enigma, a puzzle with no solution. If someone displeases her by upsetting the balance of the city or worshipping her, the lady may punish the offender. Her punishment ranges from the mazes, a twisting, turning hell with a cleverly disguised exit, to the casting of her shadow across the transgressor, covering him with slashes and gorges from her sharp-edged shadow, leaving behind a pile of gore and viscera. Neither option is particularly attractive. Awesome. The Darbus are the servants of the Lady of Pain, the enigmatic ruler of Sigil. They float above the ground and speak in rebuses, symbols strung together to spell out words. They tear down walls and construct streets under the unspoken command of the Lady. There's something about them that strikes you as wrong. Yeah, okay, the Dust Nun are the caretakers of the mortuary, a huge morgue filled with bodies. The faction seems to be a pretty somber bunch, rarely showing expression or interest in anything. They seem intent only upon taking care of all the dead bodies that come into the mortuary, cataloging them, preparing them, then burying them somewhere. The most miserable of all the miserable folk of Sigil, they have sunk as far as they can. Death would be a solace to most of them. They do not they do what they must to survive no matter how base that existence might be. Okay, uh, so apparently it sucks to be a townsperson. Fine, fine. Let's uh, continue. So we have met Anna. She didn't join yet. We have a hive dweller. Oh, there's the post. This filthy looking corpse is in a sad shape. Its shoulders are slumped and one of its legs is broken, causing it to lean to one side. Stains cover it from head to toe. Judging from the smell and the texture, the stains run from rotten fruit to mud to bird droppings. To add to the indignity, graffiti has been carved into its body and several notices have been nailed onto its chest, back and head. Hmm. Okay, let's examine the corpse. Despite the many stitches, the corpse's rotting skin is peeling in several places, revealing long stretches of muscle and bone. You'd guess that this zombie is frequently used as target practice. The fruit and mud stains aside, some of the tears in the skin still have rocks and bits of glass lodged in them. One wicked looking cobblestone is still embedded in the side of its head. Mm, pry out the cobblestone. You grab a hold of the cobblestone and pull it out of the corpse's head. Traces of brain, matter and rotting flesh slowly drip from it. It looks like whatever was in its head turned to ooze long ago. We got 250 experience points. Examine the corpse again. Uh, okay, examine the graffiti and the notices. <coughs> a number of leaflets have been ruined by rain, but some of them are still legible. One tacked to his back is from something called the Office of Vermin and Disease Control. The one on his forehead looks like a bill of fare for a restaurant and on his chest one on his chest looks like an official note and another appears to be some sort of want ad. Holy shit. This is a signpost. Look at the post for Office of Vermin and uh, Disease Control. To those hive citizens wishing gainful employ with the most honorable honorable and generous sigil government, inquire oh God, forthwith at Office of Vermin and Disease Control to help stem the plague of brain rats. 
Bounty is paid. Copper given to each red tail brought. Tails must be genuine and from red only. No cat, dog or fiend tail accepted. Offer several streets south and west of Mortuary Gate and Lower Hive. Ask for official inspector in charge the respected Phineas T. Lord um, 39. Okay. Examine the other notices. Uh, examine the bill of fare. Someone has posted a bill of fare on the gathering dust for the gathering dust bar, but the bill of fare cannot be read as the words "smoldering corpse bar" have been scrawled in chalk all over the bill. Smoldering corpse bar. The zombie immediately jerks its left arm upwards and points far to the southeast. A moment later, the arm falls back to its side with a thump. Reminds me of a job I once had. He seems embarrassed. Well, I mean, without the arms. I wonder if this would work with the other notices. Uh, examine the official notice. Public notice. By the order of the Judiciary Council and in accordance with the Citizenry of Sigil, let it be known those defacing a registered servant of the dustman, either by graffiti, malicious attack or by posting notices, will constitute felonious assault and the perpetrator will be answerable for the vandalism of said servant by order of the Hall of Speakers. Oh well, that's useless. Doesn't seem to scare anybody off. Uh, examine the want ad. <coughs> Able-bodied person willing to investigate a matter of the utmost importance to the Dustman cause will offer suitable compensation upon successful completion of said task. Interested parties inquire with initiate Norwich gathering dust bar. Gathering dust bar? The zombie immediately jerks its left arm upwards and points west to the building before you. A moment later, the arm falls back to its side with a thump. Um, thanks. Alrighty, so what did we get? A cobblestone. This is a polished cobblestone that was lodged in the zombie's skull. It still has traces of brain matter tripping from it. Mm, awesome stuff. Why don't we give all that stuff to you? Oh, let's keep Pen's note. I highly doubt I need uh, the Mortuary Sanction Key anymore, but hey, whatever. So, how about we call it the video then? I'm guessing this is the Dustman Bar and we have a Harlot here. But we will talk with her um, in the next video. You seem to be a little hurt. Um, how do you do that? Uh, I can raise that. Okay, I have bandages and I could use them on Morty. And you're healed. Awesome. So, let's call it a video. Thank I thank you very much for watching and we'll see each other in the next one. Goodbye. On second thought, there was something I forgot. Uh, let's take a look at the graffiti. I only looked at the notes. That is not a good idea. Ignore the notes and examine the graffiti. The graffiti runs from obscenities about the dustmen to slogans glorifying what appear to be local gangs. One piece of graffiti catches your eye. Someone has carved the name Farad <coughs> on the corpse's left arm, then slashed an X across it. Farad? Updated my journal. The zombie immediately jerks its left arm upwards and points far to the west and downwards. A moment later the arm falls back to its side with a thump. We get 500 XP. And the journal says, by speaking Farad's name out loud I asked the post to show me where he might be found. He pointed several blocks to the west of the mortuary and oddly enough downwards. Is Farad buried underground somewhere? Hmm. We shall find out in another video. So thank you very much for watching and see you soon. Bye.